Let's talk about visionaries and implementers. Okay. Uh, like balancing the how with the why. Chris and I have been working together for about five years now, over five years now. And I've just taken on the role of implementer to his visionary. And how that dynamic has played out over the last few years has uh, really shown like how we need each other or else we really, I feel like, wouldn't get as far as quick. Yeah, as a visionary, I've struggled. I mean, I always have big ideas, really big ideas, ideas that scare me, but they're great ideas. But I don't know how to take my vision and bring it and put it down so that it actually is something someone can understand. I mean, I can draw things, you know, I can pencil them out, but I can't write it out in most cases. So I need someone like you who can take what my vision is and implement it and actually break it down into bite-sized little pieces. And then once I see how you implement, I then can just follow suit and keep working toward that vision in smaller steps. And it actually slows me down, makes my brain be able to comprehend what's going on because I, I often like just kind of get so frustrated because I have so many ideas and they, they just all sometimes jumble together and you wanna do them all and then all of a sudden you just get frustrated. I think a lot of other people probably struggle with that. I'm not the only visionary out there. I think people have great ideas, but they don't know how to get their ideas to the market. And that's what you've helped. So yeah, sometimes being being a visionary, you can be overly ambitious and sometimes you don't really have, you don't really set those benchmarks up and, and every day kind of feels like you're not getting to what you want to because it's such a grand idea. So you need to kind of break it into that shorter strategic, like how, so that you end up feeling good at the end of the day, like you're making strides towards it. And I think that we've worked together to try to you know, balance strategies, um, small bite-sized pieces with like knowing like why we're heading in this direction and how we're getting there. And then like adapting as needed. And there's things that Chris like can bring to the table that I can't is, which is like the big relationships and building the teams that you need. Um, and I just end up kind of helping with the day-to-day -day and like where, where it all makes sense. And I feel like a lot of people need both. They need to know where they're going and then they need those people and things in place to get there. And I, I just feel like sometimes like the why, like everybody talks about their why so much. And, and sometimes I feel like it just puts it out too far and you need to think of the how so that it gets closer. Like if you know how something's going to be done or, or then you, you can start to set a timeline and you know, like, okay, this is going to take me two weeks. And then this other thing's going to take me four, four weeks, or it might take me six months. But once you know the how you can start to see your whole like year unfold, and then you can kind of see the rest of it. Um, I know some of the stuff that we're working on, we have, you know, one year, five year plans. And that's something we've all heard forever. It's like, what's your, what are your plans? But mm -hmm. people don't take the time to actually do it. And I think that's something a lot of people probably struggle with because they think, you know, they got these five year goals and maybe they got a one year goal, but even that's so big sometimes. It's like, oh, I got all this stuff I got to do. Well, break it into 90 day goals, even 30 day goals. Then it gets really easy. And I think another big mistake, I know when I first started, one thing I struggled with a lot is the, the, the term team. You know, everybody's like, oh, you gotta build a team, you gotta build a team. Now in my mind back then, I was like, I can't afford all these employees because that's what most people I think think. They, they look at a team and they say, oh, I gotta hire all these people. But you maybe don't. You gotta find people that are really strong at the things that you need, the people that can do the things you can't do or don't wanna do or shouldn't be doing in that matter. And you just gotta give them the power to go do it and bring them into the vision. Like, and I think that's what you've done really well is created that culture and helped everybody else understand how they fit into that, that culture, which then turns into that vision. Any advice for those people who, who would be like in my position, like stuck in an implementer? Like I can do, you know, X, Y, and Z, but does that mean that I actually do it? Like, cause sometimes you know why you should be doing something or uh, even you might even know how, but sometimes you don't necessarily take that next step. I, I, I think a lot of that is just proximity to people that allow you to take that next step. I think a lot of times people get stuck in their comfort zone. Like you're, you're saying implementer and I'm saying visionary, like, right? Sometimes we get so stuck in there that we, we don't know our way out of our own trap that we create for yeah. ourselves. And it's really just the title. Like just because you're a visionary doesn't mean you can't be an impl implementer. And just because you're an implementer doesn't mean you're not a visionary. It's just 
I think we, we get ourselves caught in that mindset of thinking that's what we're good at, that's what we're capable, and maybe that is the case. But then you've got the vision, so getting in a group of people that actually say, that's a great idea, you need to do that, how can I help? Or getting in a group of people where you explain your vision, you explain how you plan to implement it, but here's my struggles, and then other people say, well, I could do that, you know, or I could help with that. Now all of a sudden, just being around those people, that proximity, you know, which, which is events really, it allows you to then be the visionary, even though you might not feel like the visionary, you feel like the implementer, but by voicing it to other people, other people will then solidify that you're, you're really needing to kind of blend into that visionary role. And I don't think there's a right or wrong. I don't know. Sometimes I think I'm an implementer in some capacity and a, a visionary more so in others. And I don't know, but I, I definitely, in my mind, our self, if you will, takes us to just what we're comfortable with. You know, for me, that's that visionary space. For you, it's that implementer. And I think a lot of people probably struggle with that and they get caught in what their comfort zone is and they never make it out of that. But that's because they never allow themselves to get out of that. They never get into a group of people that think like they do or that are visionaries and implementers that can help them see to that next part. I, th I really think what's helped me tremendously is going to events and getting out and being around these people and sometimes getting out of my comfort zone and saying, here are my struggles. This is what I suck at. This is what I'm really good at. This is my vision. And some people don't want to hear it and they're just going to go, but that, that's fine. Other people are going to hang on every word and say, oh my God, you're just the person I've been looking for because they might have something that you don't and you might have something that they don't. But how are you going to know that if you just sit in your living room on Zooms, like sitting quiet behind, you got to get out and you got to get in that uncomfort zone. Yeah, actually, when you just said that, all I could think of is like, sometimes for my role, I just think I'm too busy as like with all these tasks and things to do that's stopping to go to an event. It, it just seems like a, a disruption in my flow when really it, it would, it's a disruption that I would need in my flow in order to get on a better path. I definitely learn more through other people than I do just like facts and figures or whatever, um, or processes and procedures. Like if I can see somebody else, uh, with that, with these things and they're doing it and like their life's just as busy or they, they've got the <laughs> more kids than I do or whatever. And they're doing all this stuff. Like that's the stuff that makes me be like, okay, well, what are you waiting for? Like, you, like, what is your excuse? And I know today, just just this weekend, I was looking on social media and one of the guys in our space was at this really big event, you know, with all the key players that we always talk about. They were all there. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, why am I not there? But I know I'm always like you too busy and saying, oh, if I'm not speaking at the event, I'm not going to go. But then this week now I'm getting on a plane to go to an event that I'm not speaking mm -hmm. at just to put myself back in that proximity space to just sit, observe, watch, listen and see what it's like to be an attendee instead of be the host or be the speaker at an event. And it's important to kind of play both sides of that. This workshop that we're working on, me and Chris really tried to balance like the, the, the why with the how. So almost like taking what we've learned over the past five years of working together and how I wouldn't be able to do anything without Chris's, like Chris pulling me one way and I'm sure I pull Chris in another way too. And somehow we end up getting to, to wherever, <laughs> but that's like sort of the mode of this workshop that we're doing in, in Salt Lake in April is really just trying to, to balance the how with the why, because you can tell me why all the live long day and I want to know how, and then same with, you can tell somebody how to do something. And, and essentially it's like, why are we doing this? So like pretty much finding that sweet spot where it all comes together. And so we have a lot of, um, really great speakers, like solutions, like real time solutions, like things that you can actually do, not just telling you why you should do something or that you can, or that something can be done. Cause that just like reminds me of like eating healthy or exercising. Like we all know that we should, it's more rubber meets the road when somebody tells you like how to lift <laughs> weights and stuff, like not why you should, but like more like how helps you. So 
Yeah, and I think the cool part about this event is the fact that it is true workshop. Like you had mentioned, we'll have big speakers, but we're also going to have workshops where people just come together and they work on this. You know, we're talking visionary implementer, but whatever it is the folks need. And you're really, I mean, it's all spun around money and, you know, what private money club does with people with money and people that need money. But that, that doesn't mean anything if you can't bring those two people together and allow each of them to communicate and allow each of them to solve one another's problems. And I think that's what this workshop's gonna do in a very unique way, in a way that I haven't really seen a workshop be done. So I'm excited because the way we're doing this is very different than anything I've gone to. Usually you go because there's a big speaker and you get there and you, you feel entertained. I almost feel like some of the events I go to is more entertainment value. And then at the end of it, you go home and that excitement wears off, but then you're like, wow, I really didn't talk to anybody. I really didn't, build relationships with anybody. All I did is get excited about what the speaker said, which really, sure, I'll read that speaker's book, but then you like feel empty again, searching for the next event, where this one's gonna really be solely designed around making people come together in that workshop format so that they do leave with actionable steps and actionable things that they're doing with the other people. And hopefully some massive outcomes happen from that. I'm always the person who's like, no question is a dumb question. and. But sometimes when you flow right into the next, it, it like like leaves your mind, like so you don't get a chance to ask that question. So we're we're gonna like have a speaker stop, have a speaker stop, and do like get up, move around, have it all sink in, be able to talk to somebody, be able to talk to anybody really in the whole room. And I see it being super powerful uh, for for everybody. Yeah, I think this is gonna be great. The uh, the workshop warrior. Yeah, I believe is what the name you've come up with for it. So. When is it and how do people join? Um, so it is April 28th and 29th, which is a Friday and Saturday. It's in Salt Lake City, Utah. Actually, it's Orem, Utah or something mm -hmm. like that. But it's like 40 minutes south of Salt Lake uh, Airport. And we will have you sign up at privatemoneyclub.com slash workshop. And then if you are, uh, you don't have to be a Private Money Club member just yet. You could come uh you know, it's a really good place to see if Private Money Club's even for you. Yeah. And then if you are a member, we end up, we're going to be like decorating our profiles pretty much. And you get like a decorative badge for, for attending a workshop. So yeah, yeah it'd be so a workshop warrior badge. That'll set people apart too. Now, if I'm sitting at the base of a mountain, like, and I'm looking up, all I'm seeing is where I want to be on the mountain. And, I, and that's all I'm focused on is the vision of, oh my God, when I get up there, you know, this. And, and I think a lot of people like that's what they focus on, but some people are actually focused on, okay, to get there, we should probably go up this, cut over, go over there, base camp here, and then make it to the top. Or me, I'm just like, all right, when, let's get going, let's start. And I think a lot of visionaries make the mistake because they do, they fail to plan and fail to take those steps to really map out the best way to get to that final you know, vision that they have. And I think because of that, they never get there. So I think the difference between a visionary and an implementer is really the visionary sees the top of the mountain where they wanna be. The implementer sees all the steps it's gonna to take to get to the top of the mountain. So if you're ever gonna climb a mountain, definitely don't go with a visionary because you'll probably die halfway up. But if you're gonna make it to the top, you probably should have a visionary that has the vision for what it's gonna to be to get there because they're gonna be the ones that are fighting the hardest even when times get hard. But the implementer is the one that maps it out and plans out step by step how we're gonna get there. So the two of them complement one another. So. I think that's a great way to describe a visionary from an implementer and how each need each other. You you just reminded me though real quick of growing up on the East Coast snowboarding is is you kind of and this might be the implementer role a little bit too is you end up learning in really crappy conditions and going down the hill and like <laughs> and like you know less than favorable it could be icy it could be slushy you could be hitting grass you could be hitting rocks all these things but then when it when the sun is shining and it is a really good day and you do have the clear vision, it is extremely surprising the skills that you learned on the bad days yeah. when they come out on the bluebird days. So, yeah. Well, I hope a bunch of people join us for the Workshop Warrior out in Orem, Utah. It's gonna be an unbelievable event. And I think a lot of people are really gonna find out what they're made of and also balance it out with the other people. And that's why I always like to say, you know, with Private Money Club, which is the, the baseline of this event, it's people that have money meet people that need money and the two get together to solve each other's problems. It's a win-win opportunity. And I think this event is also a win-win opportunity. So thanks for putting it together. Yep, looking forward to it.